Well, we're getting ready to do our Thanksgiving dinner thing here. And the first step is cleaning up the kitchen. All right, everybody, it's time for the first major step in our Thanksgiving dinner preparations. I've got to go ahead and prepare some carrots. We're making, for want of a better way to put them, little waffle cut strips of carrots. So the first thing I have to do is get ye old carrot peeler out. And then when I'm done peeling the carrots, I use this thing to make them into little waffle strips that look something like that. So let's go over here to the kitchen sink. I've got a bucket of ice water in it over here. And here's a carrot. I'm going to start peeling this thing. Not terribly hard to peel carrots. Which means I'd be pretty good at it. off here with that and now for the fun part this thing a little waffle cutter Let's see if I can do this Ow. dirt don't hurt <laughs> I'm better at peeling carrots than I am at waffle cutting them, I'll assure you of that much. If you're not careful with this thing, it's sharp enough to take a bite out of you. So don't do that. And there the carrots are. All done and ready to eat. Okay, we're getting ready to make scalloped corn here now. I've got all the carrots done. Basically, the way you do this, you just crush this container of saltines, trying not to make a horrible mess of them. It's easier to do this two-handed. But I'm managing. And then, of course, they've broken open, so I can just dump that in there. Nothing to it. Sounds like the can opener's going over there. Yep, we got a can of cream style corn. Cans of cream style corn and empty them in there and with the spatula clean it out really good and uh, then stir it all up with the egg. Okay, this is another one of these two handed jobs to clean out these cans. But I can at least dump them in there for your viewing pleasure. Alright, now let's mix this thing up. And make sure the egg gets mixed in real good. And what do we have now? We have whole corn. kernel sweet corn going in there. All kinds of corn. An ode to corn. A real cornucopia of goodies. Ha ha ha. You're so corny. <laughs> it's pretty bad, isn't it? It's coming. Oh yeah, this is the part that makes it good right here, a piece of a stick of butter. Adds like 20 pounds to it, but... You think you can fit another can in there without running it over? Mm, I think it's going to be real close. Okay, good. I'll tell you what folks, this second fridge really does come in handy for all this Thanksgiving stuff. There you can see the scalloped corn. We'll just heat all this stuff up tomorrow for Thanksgiving. Alright, here's the list of stuff that we're making. And we can cross scalloped corn off of it. And now it's time for the mashed potatoes. Yep, we get butter in this too. 
No wonder people gain so much weight around the holidays. <laughs> well, I bought more butter. Okay, so while that's melting... Now for the next part, the stuffing. Now the story behind the stuffing is very interesting. A lot of people, ourselves included, buy their stuffing from a box. You know, it says stove top, you throw it in a pot, you add a little water, it's good to go. Well, we were shopping at the grocery store, my mother and I were, and we hit upon the idea of making stuffing from scratch. We were walking down one of the aisles near the frozen foods talking about this, and my mother said, you know, I'm going to look up a recipe on the web. And lo and behold, if there wasn't an older woman there, and she said, you know, I'll tell you how to do it. It's not hard to make it at all. Sometimes it's just amazing what you don't need Google to find. <laughs> and so she gave us some ideas for a recipe basis, and basically what I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to chop up this bread, which you can see I've already started on here, and then I'm going to cube it. We're going to take the finished cubes and put them on this pan, just like so, and we're going to roast these up, probably with some spices. I've got a can, a shaker can of pizza spice that I bought on closeout somewhere that might go really, really well with these breadcrumbs. But I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. All right, here we go. You can't really see what I'm doing, but here's the bread. And let's see here. Let's go ahead and just cut this down the middle. better than I am. You have to use a gentle touch when you cut the bread because it wants to fall apart. But I've got that covered. Look at those bread cubes just exactly like that. And believe it or not, folks, the bread heel is good for something. <laughs> I wonder if I didn't just try to knock my soda over. I don't think you should pour soda on a handy cam. While I'm cutting up bread over here, the mashed potatoes are well underway. And then they too will go in a container and they'll be reheated tomorrow when we're ready for them. Make 17 servings. We're going to have 10 people here. So you yeah, might as well make a lot of them. <laughs> All right, it's time to put the bread crumbs in the oven. But first we have to get the various and sundry other things out of there. might need more bread than that, but that's a good starting point. And just let those toast up a little in there. While we're working on some of the other ingredients for the stuffing, here's the celery. If you would like to get probably a wooden spoon. Now we're just doing a little sauteing. Got the celery in here now. And this isn't ideal, but we're trying to cut down on the number of dishes we get dirty for everything that's going on here. And I think maybe that's an onion that's getting ready over there. Yep, here comes the onion. And boy, is that fragrant. <laughs> okay, I'm going to cut up some garlic. Well, here's the garlic, and a little bit of this goes a really long way. Now this is smelling really good, folks. We've put a couple other things in there since the last time I talked about it here on the video. We threw some pizza topper in there. 
and some parsley flakes. And here we've got something fresh from the garden. I think this is sage. Sage. There it is. Even though we've had a couple of moderately hard frosts, there's still a few good things out there. Sage is kind of hardy. There we go. Just turn that down a little. I already did. Okay. Nothing artificial about this. <laughs> no monsodium glutamate here. It's the real McCoy. Okay, here's the bread in the oven after a couple of minutes of cooking. At a temperature right around 300 and then we just shut it off and let the oven kind of idle it down. This is real multitasking here. I'm stirring this stuff, taking video and looking at the bread in the oven. <laughs> What's this? This is chicken broth, I think. Yeah. Where's that going? It's going into the stuffing. Two cans of that. Yeah, you can bring that up to higher if you want. All right, turn that up again. Something else to throw in the stuffing here. Some New York Texas Toast Croutons, garlic and butter flavored. So they'll, they don't need to go in the oven. They'll add something of their own. And they're a little bit old, so we need to be using them up anyway. Open the oven for me. Okay, okay there's our basis of the croutons. And they're a little flavored. Yep, and they got garlic and butter flavor on them. Okay. And here is the stuffing mix over there on the stove. Okay, so we had some Italian bread and some white bread. Let's see how full that fills the bowl. Well, I think it's going to fill it pretty full. Oh, escapee. Good. Doesn't All right. it? Yeah, it, it smells incredible, folks. You ought to write to the BBC and ask them for information about smell o vision Uh-oh. Don't spill it on the floor. Uh, I just poured it on my foot. <laughs> okay, folks, here's the official verdict. How is it? It does look good. You can see we have our time-tested rolls recipe out here. I think this thing goes back to the early 1990s when we first got our bread machine. Two servings. Three servings. Four servings. Five servings. Whoops. Six. Seven. And we got about seven servings. There's roughly 12 servings of stuffing in that casserole container. Alright, so we need a couple more things. I've got to make a quick pilgrimage to the local grocery establishment here. Uh, it's only 5.01 in the evening. I hate how it gets dark early in the winter time like this. All right, everybody. This place is hopping. Look at all these cars and trucks. Look at all these cars and trucks that are parked along here. Even got people on foot around here. Just absolutely unreal. And I know this is a small grocery store in a small town, so some of you in the big city will wonder what I'm on about, but everything's relative, you know. But I got lucky. They opened another check lane just as I was walking up, so I got everything I needed to have right over here. Make more stuffing, get a couple of things we didn't have, stuff like that. There's some moron without his headlights on. Takes all types, I guess. But now I'm on my way back home. The key keeper made it home from his work for the day. So let's see here. You think I can do all this one handed? Lock the 
door. Shut the door. Hope I didn't leave my keys in the truck. And we'll go inside. Get back to making Thanksgiving dinner once again. Look at this. I see a beacon over there. I see a beacon over there too by the black flag. <laughs> Looks like a night shot beacon indicating a warning that the key keeper's around. Oh man, does it smell good in here. Let's oh. see. Dishwasher's running. I got the stuff. Yep, Thanksgiving dinner inches closer to completion by every second. We've got enough of a crowd that not only do we have our Thanksgiving turkey over here, which we haven't done anything with yet, but we also have a small turkey breast that's all prepared and ready to be heated up tomorrow. Now we're going to be fixing our turkey not on the oven, but on the grill. We have a charcoal fired Weber grill. Our dad's going to start that up and he's going to be fixing the turkey, which is always really, really good. Next up, learn how to play the bread accordion in 10 easy lessons. <laughs> okay. It's really good. It's seasoned just perfectly. Yep, that's the finished result right there. Two whole batches worth. What was it? Like about two and a half loaves of bread? Yeah, well, probably closer to two and three quarters because we used some of the fancy 12 grain bread back there. Okay. Okay, so all we have to do with this is just warm it in the oven. Okay, everybody, we've been at this for a couple hours now. I'd say about a little over three hours. We started around three o'clock making the stuffing. Now we've done a couple of things. Let's see what we got off our list here. We got the turkey breast done, mashed potatoes, corn scallop, scalloped corn, carrots and celery, the dressings done. We got our soda bought, all that good stuff. So now, we just need to clean things up a little bit because our next stop is going to be the pumpkin pie and the best place in the world to cool pies at least around these parts is on that counter island in the middle there so we got to do a little regrouping and refiguring and cleaning up but we'll be right back thanks to the magic of video editing all right everybody we're back sitting we're working on pie dough now for our pumpkin pies of which there will be two we're going to make our pie crust from scratch all kinds of fun ingredients here, including more butter. How oh, cool how it stacks up like that. Yep, we'll just keep using the remnants of our sticks of butter from other things that we've made. Butter. Close enough for government work. Here's our ice cold water. Alright, after much kneading, we have a made from scratch pie crust. And the idea here is just to pat it out until it fits the entire pan. You could also throw it in the refrigerator, chill it, and then roll it out with a rolling pin if you wanted to, but we're trying to save time and yeah, get everything this is done. Faster, so we'll get this going. Here's the whole thing happening again for the second pie pan. There's the first one, and you can see how it's just kind of pressed out. Little fingertip indentations in there. Now it's time for the pie filling. I got evaporated milk right there. And then we have a can of Libby's brand pumpkin pie. Pumpkin material, to which we will add a number of things, sugar and a bunch of other stuff, to actually get a workable pie out of that. I have actually seen one of their pumpkin farms and it is incredible to watch them harvest that and haul just semi loads of harvested pumpkins out of there. Whoa. 
This is a little bit of cinnamon right here. Here comes the ginger, which is brand new and, well, close to brand new and sealed in its container. So there's the ginger. Just a tiny little bit of cloves because, as my mother was just saying, she is not a big fan of cloves. Eggs. Four of them. A smart person would crack them in a separate bowl in case there was a rotten one. But these are fresh, so... Recycle the carton. Time for the evaporated milk now. Cut a couple of holes in that so that it can... Uh, can I go ahead and pour that in there? Cut a couple of holes in that so that it will come out smoothly instead of burbling. And there's another one. That one's got a whole bunch of holes in it. Multi-port. And there's okay. the pumpkin, which looks nothing like it does in the finished pie, of course. And I get to stir all this fun stuff together. You know how they make that, right? Okay. Come on. Well, we can't be making a mess out of it. Can't get it all over the handy cam because uh, maybe handy cams are waterproof, but uh, they're probably not pumpkin pie proof. What, are you going to volunteer yours there? No. Mine is a handy cam. Come on, a sticker on it, okay? <laughs> I can't be messing that sticker up. <laughs> hey. I've all right, there it is, all made up and ready to go. Now it gets to go into the pie. The pie. One for you. One for you. One for you. One for you. Click here. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Did I give you a spatula? Did I give you a spatula? I don't know. And this, folks, is the slow and deliberate pie walk. Is that like a, a cakewalk? No. Darn. Is it stilted? It's like the stilted poop walk. <laughs> that's bad. That's very bad. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> well, she started it. Yeah, she sure did. Oh, and man. You had to finish it. Yeah. When do you want to go uh, Christmas tree shopping or, adventure, or uh, adventuring? You open the oven. Did I open the oven? Sure. <laughs> what you gotta do is like Matrix style. Don't! <laughs> <laughs> is that like when the wicked old witch was trying to push Hansel and Gretel into the oven? Yes. To eat them? Okay. Set on boil for 50 minutes. Let's see. I might have to try a brown too. I don't know how well I'm doing over see, here. So you think they could become 180 minute rolls then? <laughs> we'll just see how they turn out. Is this for the YouTube world? Something like that. Doing a little video on everything we've done for Thanksgiving dinner so far. Got the two pumpkin pies here. They're looking good. I'd like to give a shout out to College 153. Keep subscribing. <laughs> uh, maybe someday I'll post a video. <laughs> there you go. How much of this you want me to get out of there? Actually, there you go. I'm a college boy, as my brother Eric tells me. So that's, that's where the name comes from. Okay, I'm looking for the lid with this. We're making dinner rolls for Thanksgiving right now. I believe William's been helping um, everybody, namely my mom, make food all day. So I got home this evening and it's my turn. And I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but because this involves an active culture and I'm supposed to be a science person, I'm in charge. <laughs> okay then. 
I figure you might want to talk to uh, Furhead. He's probably got some culture between his toes. Yeah, well, we want these to taste all right. <laughs> oh, and not like spontaneously combust either. That would probably be good. No, uh, definitely not the best thing. I it heard he like hammered so. out the silver Buick fender. He did, after viciously crashing it into my truck. <laughs> I heard that too. Dad told me he wasn't very impressed with it. So, well, I wasn't too impressed either, but you know what? Everything can be, everything else can be fixed, and it, and it might just buff out, you know? Well, we can't fix Eric. I think he's broken permanently. <laughs> Where's the rest pod? Where's the rest pod? Is he going to see that? Should I definitely censor myself before I say too many mean things about him? Yeah, I, you know what I'll do? I'll just do this... Uh, I can do this neat looking mosaic thing here. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean, it's something like that. We'll catch you. I'm trying. It's like wedging clay. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you wedge clay, isn't no, it? You, you want to be careful what you say, don't you? <laughs> yeah, be a little bit careful. He, he might get the pug mill out later. <laughs> yeah, I like the pug mill a lot more than wedging this stuff. I'm getting far in my only clear clean pair of jeans. <laughs> what, you don't want to get it in your eye? Not particularly. Yeah, you big chicken. <laughs> oh yeah, you want some in yours? I'll help you out. Oh yeah, you probably throw it at me. Here. What? I want these. <coughs> oh, I'm not doing a good enough job. I wasn't doing a good enough job turning up the pumpkin pie earlier. She took over from me because I was trying to film myself doing it. Yeah. I was slacking apparently. Well, she's just upset because she knows that mine were going to taste okay. She doesn't want me to have a better reputation as a baker than she has. Uh-oh. Mom, you realize that this table's made out of wood and the way you're going at it, you're going to snap yeah, i tell you what, <laughs> I got something going on here. Yeah, I was just trying to maintain it. How about you time me for Oh, now, now we are breaking so stuff. Did you time me for I didn't know Illinois got earthquakes. What's, what's going on? You want it to be time for how long? A minute. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Four Mississippi. Five Mississippi. Six Mississippi. Seven Mississippi. Eight Mississippi. I wondered if you were going to make it all through 60 of those. No. I gave up early. Sorry. That table's starting to make some real interesting noises. I'll try to brace it. You gotta work more flour into it, Mom. You're not working enough flour. No, we got enough. No, you need a half cup more. No. Mm -hmm. Don't. <laughs> Do what I want. <laughs> About 15 more seconds. You're in the home stretch. She hasn't exercised this much in about 20 years, so she's gonna be <laughs> sore tomorrow. <laughs> she looks like she's gonna club you with I the frying pan. I got flour here and I know how to use it. Oh, well, I don't understand what you're saying. It sounds like you have a speech in front of there as well and you know how to use that as well. Yeah, we haven't lost that one candle back there yet. It's still proudly standing up for itself. Come on, Ma, can you knock that last candle over? Oh, I thought we didn't need any more flour. <laughs> Nothing. I just I learned from mom that you have to shake the table a lot to actually. Well, are you gonna do knock this. that candle over? Is that the goal? Yeah. See if you do can it. do it. Oh, well, there went the placemat. Oh yeah, score! <laughs> I think that dough was being very naughty there. That's right. <laughs> upset her. That, that'll get some of the weirdos out in the comments in full force. That looks, I don't know, it almost looks like a butterfly in a cocoon. A chrysalis? Yeah. It kind of does. It's got the right lines on it and everything. Well, James, you don't want to overhandle it. Let's I'm get stretching it out so I can just go one, two, three, four. James, get into 12, 24 balls, please. Come on. <laughs> 24. Come on. I have a difference in biscuit-making philosophy here. I don't want you playing with it. Come on. <laughs> Mom, this is a family show. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> if you interrupt the raising. Who's the biologist? Come on, James. <laughs> oh, kitty. What's your problem, kitty? Here, you want to stretch that piece out? No. You have 12 pieces. One. There we go. They're finally starting to look like dinner rolls now. Two. Three. Four. Five. Oh, see how well that worked out? count. If you had done it my way, you wouldn't have lost count. Well, you're probably right. I probably now have too many little ones. I don't know. That one's probably too big. That's what she said. <laughs>